look up to the hills from where comes your help. Lift your gaze towards heaven that your heart might be set on eternal things. I'm Angela Madden and I'm joined today by Anna Fry. Welcome to Hope Today. Anna, yeah. I think today's show is going to keep our eyes oh. focused on Jesus. Absolutely. Ushering us into the presence of God where there is fullness of yes. joy. Well, we're so glad that you're with us on Hope Today. It's Friday. And we have a beautiful musician with us live in the studio. Her name is Ruth Fazal. She's a violinist, a pianist, and she currently lives in both Toronto and Israel. Not only will she lead us in a time of worship, but she'll be sharing her heart for Israel along with the journey God has been leading her on. Anytime we have a musician in the house with us to usher us, us into worship is a special day. It really is. It gets me excited. I get all geared up and, and we have this amazing guest, but Anna, yeah. we also have Fun Friday. Woo. Oh yeah, Woo. we're gonna have a little <laughs> bit of fun right now. We thought it would be good to talk to you about the Chosen series for our Fun Friday segment. In fact, it's hitting theaters this weekend, episodes four, five, and six. And when it comes to this brand new season of The Chosen, you can expect the unexpected. Take a look. Many things pass away. But my words, my words, they'll never pass away. Martha, Martha, please sit down here with me. Judas, you are angry. My understanding is shaken. I know nothing, except he is the one true Messiah, and he called me. We have a strategy. I'm sorry? Jesus of Nazareth. Blood on your hands does not always equate to wrongdoing. This is no innocent man. The human desire to avoid difficult news sometimes makes one deaf. I speak the words of my Father in heaven, and the religious leaders call it blasphemy. My own followers, they ask for earthly things, prestige. They take offense when I show humility and deference to the powers of this world. They're only human, what did you expect? Also human. Every time I have the opportunity to watch The Chosen, I am drawn into the pages of Scripture. I get lost in it. And so to me, it's not surprising, Anna, that to date, The Chosen has amassed over 500 million streams, wow. reaching an audience of more than 108 million viewers since its first season's debut. This Chosen Season 4, Episodes 4 through 6, are premiering in theaters this weekend. And Episodes 7 and 8 will hit theaters February 29th. Be sure to check your local listings for showtimes and make it there. I'm telling you, Anna, this Chosen series to me has been transformative, yeah. even for my own self, to just feel myself being drawn into the different characters and experiencing the living word all right. over again. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible to listen to the people who have gone to see it, who are invested in just pouring out so much praise and impact of how God's word coming alive on the screen there is, is making a difference for them. And so this is your weekend to be inviting friends, inviting loved ones, those who don't know Jesus yet, invite them to the movie theater with you. Make a plan to go out for dinner before, after, and just make the most of the opportunity. Well, we also don't want to take up any more time getting to our guest today. Ruth is going to be performing for us. And so her first song is called One Thing I Ask. 
start your chance to enter into the presence of God. Lord, there's just one thing. One thing we ask of you, Lord. We could dwell in your house, in your presence, all the days of our lives. This is what I ask, Lord, to see you, to hear you, to hear your voice. I'm waiting, Lord. One thing I ask, one thing I what I seek, that I may dwell in your house all the days of my life to gaze upon your beauty and see hear your voice, to know, Lord, what you're saying, what you're doing. As a worship leader and songwriter, Ruth Fazell has traveled extensively across North America, Europe, and Israel. Her deepest desire is to see the body of Christ enter into a truly intimate relationship with Jesus. She currently lives in Canada and Israel, and Ruth joins us to share her heart for the people of Israel and how we can pray for them. She'll also share her personal story with us of how God is using her to impact the world with her gift of music. So Ruth, it was so good to have you here in live in person with us. Welcome to Hope Thank Today. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. 
So we want our CTV and family to get to know you a little bit. Tell us about your a bit of your background and how God brought you to where you are today and living in Israel. Mm, well, that's a long journey. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I grew up in England and um, as you can probably tell from my accent, and uh, I left England to move to Canada when uh, with, with my husband in, when in, I'm just trying to think, I was 21, 22, something like that. And uh, from there, uh, I've been working professionally as a violinist um, for all those years. And uh, then there were songs that the Lord started to give me and I would start to share them. So worship, worship, leading worship, and then traveling doing that became very much part of what I was doing. And, and slowly, you know how God, he, he never gives you it all at once, right? Yes. <laughs> he takes you slowly from here to here. And so, and then one day, um, back in the year around 2000, about the year 2000, a colleague of mine gave me a book of poetry and art of children from a place called Terezin or Terezinstadt, which uh, is, is in, in the Czech Republic or at the time called Czechoslovakia. And Terezin was a, um, it, it was basically a ghetto that the Nazis took over and the thousands and thousands of people were taken to there, Jewish people were taken there, adults, children, old people, very young people. And they, um, they thought that they were just, that Hitler said, we're gonna give a place for the Jews to be. Total lie, total deception. It was a way station to the death camps. So uh, now I have this book in my hand and the book is called, I Never Saw Another Butterfly. And I'm thinking, okay, um, I'm wondering why my friend gave it to me. And I was wondering even more when he said, I think you might want to do something with this. And at the time I thought, well, what would you be thinking I want to do with it? And what was really interesting that, that this man was not even a believer, he, but he knew, he knew that I was, and somehow he felt to give me this book. And so I read the book and um, it's full of poetry and art of these children that were in the ghetto. And I was so touched because so many of the poems spoke of hope. It's interesting enough, it's the name of your program. They spoke of hope and I, it really uh, touched my heart. It wasn't until about a year later I felt the Lord say, Ruth, I want you to take some of these poems and weave them together with the scriptures to portray my heart in the midst of the suffering. Now, at the time, yes, I knew it was, I knew this, it was about Jewish people, but I thought God was just talking about suffering in general, human suffering. Where is God when everything is falling apart, when it, it just seems like it's so black? Where is he? And, and so I started, you know, I'm thinking, the Lord said to me to do this, so what choice do I have? I could say, well, quite legitimately, I could say, no, I, you know, I have two pre-teenage children. I'm really busy right now. Maybe I could do it in a few years. But no, I didn't say no on that account. Then I thought, well, you know, I, what, what, what choice do I really have? And so I ended up saying yes. And so I began to look at these poems, read the poems. And in the end, I ended up writing a piece for children's choir, obviously for singing the children's poetry. But then I thought, well, there needs more than just a piano. So it ended up being a big piece for a big orchestra. And then there was also, because he told me to put it together with the Hebrew scriptures, and so, and a lot of the scriptures are, when it comes to um, being in a difficult place, it's God's people are crying out. Where are you? Where are you? Oh God, there's this one, well, well we, there's this one part of that I chose. Oh God, you God of vengeance. Um, rise up, uh, smite, basically smite the wicked is the, is the bottom line. And so 
I, I entered into this journey which I had no idea what God was doing. I didn't know that what he was actually doing in the whole process, it took about two and a half years of, of writing this piece because I was writing it in between lots of other things I was doing. And, and it, was, it was about two and a half years. And during that time, I realized at the end of that time that God had inserted his people Israel into my heart. There was nothing I could do about it. There they were. It wasn't, I didn't ask for it. He did it. I think it's incredible how, you know, something you said, I, I said yes to what God was calling me to, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And isn't that so true that when he calls us to use our gifts, he takes us into an unknown territory and just calls us into that obedience to mm -hmm. step out. And then we get to see what he will do. And so take us now into you're with the people of Israel. Yes. What is God showing you is his heart for the, the people of Israel, especially in their current state of suffering, God's heart for yeah. them. Well, you know, I mean, the, the writing of the piece really, you know, you, you sort of wonder how, how I, growing up in sort of middle-class England, a nice family, a nice, a nice environment, no real difficulties, how would God call me? To, to, do, to do this. I, I, it's like I felt very unqualified. Um, the piece ended up going all over the place to, uh, to Europe. We went to three cities in Europe and finally to Israel. And th throughout all that time, I was meeting Holocaust survivors. Wow. And so it wasn't until a few years later, because I thought that my life would go back to normal. After we finished all the performances, and then it went to New York, it was in Carnegie Hall. And, wow. and so it was, you know, there was all of this sense of excitement, and, and it was very busy, and it's like, you know, okay, so when things calm down again, which they never did, really. <laughs> it, it just goes on for the next thing, right? But then I was sensing the Lord asking me to go to Israel after we'd done the performances in Israel, then a few years later, to go to Israel, to be there. And I went for two reasons. One was to, um, I started learning Hebrew, and I so I was con going to continue to learn Hebrew, and to play my violin for Holocaust survivors. And I didn't know, you know, how I was going to, how that was going to work out. But it, it did, and I ended up, what was really special, I didn't want to do concerts. I wanted to visit them in their homes and just play over them. And so that's, that's very much what, I, what I've been doing in Israel. And then more recently in Israel, uh, working together alongside um, a young man who's an Orthodox Jew, a modern Orthodox Jew, and we've been working together for well, 10, 12 years now, yeah. um, hosting groups of Christians coming to Israel so we can just talk about how do we walk alongside one another, not with the purpose to change one another, but to walk alongside really to um, just to see how much we really have in common, yes. way more than we might think. So, we, th so we, we have just about a minute left. Can <laughs> yeah, you yeah, yeah. share with us how we can be praying for the people mm. of Israel and then would you just lead us in a quick prayer? Yeah, for I think them. to be praying for them to hold, um, to really hold on to what they know, what they really know is the right thing. No matter what, the, uh, what other nations are saying and as nations are slowly pulling out, to hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what you have to do. You know you have to, you have to finish this war which was started by Hamas, you know you have to finish it, don't pull back now. That's what we need to be praying for the leaders of Israel. And I'll, shall I just pray? Yes. Father, I just ask right now that you will give the leaders of Israel, all those who are making decisions, Lord, give them hearts to make your decision, a godly decision, Lord, that they will lead not out of their own um, their own thoughts but out of your word and I just pray Lord that you will protect the borders of Israel right now 
and uh, especially in the north, which looks like it's really heating up. So just pray your your blessing and uh, your your blessing of shalom over the whole nation. Amen. Amen. Well, Ruth, we are going to be closing out the end of the show with a song on the violin. Can you tell us what to expect with that? Well, it's about as little as I expected. You know, often when I play and I would play over the Holocaust survivors, I never knew what I was going to play. And so I would just, you know, it's, I pray the Lord will play through me. So that's what this morning was. Uh, well, thank you so much, Ruth, yeah, for being awesome. here and sharing yeah. your gift. All right, well, we are going to enter in now to listen to Ruth share through her violin. And we just want to note, too, that Ruth will be at the Gathering Place this weekend at 275 Center Road, Monroeville, 15146. She'll be there Friday, 7 p.m., Saturday, 11 a.m., and Sunday, 1030 a.m. One thing that I love, and, and I just want to say this before we go to the song, is that you mentioned you see their hope in the midst of suffering. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so powerful. I think that, Ruth, when you, when you share that, could you tell me very quickly in about 60 seconds, what does that hope look like right now in the midst of their suffering and perhaps even ours? It's, I believe that suffering is God's invitation to us into intimacy with him. There is no greater invitation than when we find ourselves in that place of suffering. And, and so I, I certainly, going through this piece, when I was writing the, this piece, the Oratorio Terrazin, there was, um, I went through a very hard time as I was writing it, but it was the deepest time of intimacy with the Lord. So I really encourage people, don't hold back, just know that this is an invitation. Yes, it's an invitation. Him. Yes, yes absolutely. in the midst of suffering yeah. to find our answer yeah. in him. Amen. So let's take a listen. And perhaps even now, if you're experiencing suffering or you're going through some anguish, we pray that this song as Ruth ministers will minister to the depth of who you are and take you into new spaces with him. Amen.
Are you tired of just getting bills in your mailbox? Find inspiration instead by subscribing to the Cornerstone Television's Hope Today newsletter. Each month, we'll deliver good news about what God is doing in our region and world through CTVN's ministry. We'll keep you in the know about our latest special programming, and our full program guide will keep you connected to all your favorites. You'll also find a new Dashing Dish recipe every month. As you read our Hope Today newsletter, stay encouraged knowing your generosity and giving to CTVN is making a difference and building God's kingdom. We can't do it without you. Sign up today to receive your inspirational free Hope Today newsletter every month in your mailbox. Go to our website at ctvn.org news or call us at 888-665-4483. Thank you for being a part of our Cornerstone Television family. Hope happens here. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.